Large language models are made of these four major components and now we are going to look at the details about the first one that is the transformer architecture. So transformer architecture is the core of a large language model and let me just do the full screen and what it contains. So this is a uh, transformer architecture which many of you might have seen in the attention is all you need paper by Google. Uh, talking about each individual component is out of the scope of this video but in brief what is the are the main components of this transformer architecture is the left side is the encoder part and the right side is the decoder part so the encoder and decoder together uh, contains uh, 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 the whole transformer architecture and we are going to talk about this in the next few slides so this is a simple way of uh, talking about it just take as an encoder which takes a particular line like here it is I like dogs and the deco and then it is passed on to the decoders which translates it into the German language and this is a very simple uh, demonstration not going to do the too much technical terms that are there this is the way it works so encoders understands the language it is more into for this uh, understanding of what it, it means by telling I like a dog and decoders are the ones that does the uh, work and it generates a text here it is uh, uh, the text that is there and this is a very high level architecture but end of the day it, it, it is it goes in little bit details so the transformers uh, has six encoders as I was mentioning uh, and six decoders each of these contain the attention mechanism which allows the model to focus on different parts of the input text so this means you feed the input uh, here at the bottom and the output from the first encoder is fed into the second encoder and so on third fourth it goes up all the way to the topmost encoder now by passing the data to these successive encoder layers the model ab uh, is able to capture deep and more complex understanding of the language semantics and this is then fed to the decoder layers which are on the right side of the diagram the encoder and the decoder can be used independently or together depending upon the task for encoder and decoder model it is majorly uh, when they are working together it is used to generate a task like in this case that I showed you like if you want to convert a uh, in English to German you are using an encoder decoder model because you want to understand as well as you want to generate a summarization or a translation then there is encoder only model so encoder only model is for good language understanding right when i say good language understanding it is like sentiment analysis sentence classification whether you want to uh, see whether a sentence is, is it a positive review a negative review or a neutral so this happens by encoder only model and that gave birth to something called as a BERT you might have heard about BERT what is the full form it is a bi-directional encoder representation from transformer so it is an encoder only model that when people say BERT that is the meaning of that then we have decoder only model decoder only model as you can see they are mainly uh, also doing generation of tasks like test generation or whatever is that it, it is able to do that so the examples of the decoder only model is uh, chat gpt gpt3 and uh, all these things so decoder on uh, models are good for generating uh, tasks and most of the research has been around the decoder models uh, why so because uh, decoder models are able to generate text they are more useful as chatbots or virtual assistants uh, and uh, that is why there is a lot of research in this space and uh, uh, transformers are made up of layers of encoders and decoders and depending upon the task we can use whichever type of uh, model uh, that we want so this gave you a brief overview 
of both the components of encoder decoder and how to use it in our llm application see you in the next video